All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel today. Um, task at hand today is going to put a, a brand new chain on this DR350, 93 DR350S. Uh, Cody and I are going to be riding it some this coming spring. The chain's getting some wear in it. Let's get a new one on it and see how it turns out. So, doing some shopping around, and I found that Chaparral um, Motorsports out in California had a really good sale on some chains. And this is a JT chain. Now, I normally run, I always run JT sprockets on everything. Went ahead and picked up a 14 tooth to put in the, uh, put in the tank bag because I have a 13 tooth on there and my, my original 14 tooth was worn out. I'm going to put this in the bag in case we have to do some, you know, 500 miles of pavement or something. This will keep the revs down on the, on the engine, you know. And I went ahead and grabbed some uh, Master Links for all my bikes. The CT is a 428. The DR is a 520 and the Hemi is a 525. So really good deal on these JT uh, Master Links. Went ahead and picked them up. But here's the deal. I'm a DID chain fan usually. I think I put a chain on this bike when I first got it. But, and it's probably a DID chain. It's probably got many thousand miles on it. It's been great. But sometimes times get a little tight. JT full steel chain. I don't see X-ring chain. I don't see what in the world could be wrong. This is uh, pre-length for factory. You know, it's 108 length to fit the DR. So I think it's going to be good. It was 58 bucks, I think, or less. So versus 100 for other ones. Let's get it on there and see how it does. And we'll put the, we'll put the old one back in the bag in the box in case we have a catastrophe. All right, guys, let's get, let's get it on there. Try not to get my head in the way of the camera. Yeah, look at that. That would have that would have hit the trail easily. All right. If I remember correctly, this is an O-ring chain, but man, it has been years since I've had this thing off. Many years. There we go. Yep, it's definitely, well, let's see, no? It's just a regular chain. Unless the O-rings have completely fallen off, I think this might just be a regular old school chain. Okay, so. Got this brand new nice JT steel. Let's make this easy. Let's lay this up in here like this. Put this back on if we can. Just briefly, I should have brought some rags over here. All right. Now, the goal, if it works, is to wheel this new chain right on in. Now, if your chain breaks out on the trail, this is going to be completely undoable. But let's see what we got here. Keep this brand new chain out of the dirt, if at all possible. It's a pretty cool little trick that you can do. All right. Now, 
Now, since this chain is new and not stretched like the other one, I may have to loosen this off a little. It looks like I might have to. Let's make sure we don't have anything binding. Yeah, all right. Let's get, uh, we'll get the, I was kind of afraid of that, but it's no big deal. We'll get the axle shaft loose and loosen this up and then we'll readjust everything. I, I was, I was figuring on that, but I thought we might get lucky and come out okay. So let's do, let's get that axle shaft loose, guys. All right, task at hand, let's get the, let's get the Carter key off. And the DR350's got a 24 millimeter nut. Go loosen that up, give herself a little slack. We may be able to reuse this Carter key here. I believe we will. Okay. Get that good slack. Let's let the table take over again. All right, so we're going to come this way with this if we're going to give ourselves some slack. Make sure you get that plenty loose. And sometimes I have to tap on that a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Get that out of the way. Do this one over on this side the same. All right, I don't know if you guys use these Nipex pliers, but man, the tighter you turn them, I don't really like to put them on nuts and bolts on the bike, but if you're really in a jam out on the trail, these are great, great tool. We can uh, use them here to pull this axle forward a little maybe. All right, yeah, so there we go. Got that. Now, JT chain comes with two different master links. These you can brad the end of, and this one uses the little clip, and that's what we'll be using today. There's no problem with using that as long as you turn it in the right, in the right direction where limbs and stuff don't knock it off. You guys make sure to have plenty of rags before you start trying to make this video. <laughs> I guarantee you'll need them. All right, guys, forgot to mention about the X-rings comes most of the time it's going to come with a little bag of grease and the o-rings and x rings will be in there just just shove them down in the grease get you some good grease on them you don't really want it to start out dry it's good just to get so the x ring if you look at it really close it's it's kind of made like an x if you were to cut it and look at it from an end it's shaped like an x and that is to really reduce the drag. So there's a lot of surface area touching the metal on a O-ring chain. And the way this one's designed, it holds a little more oil or grease and it's less friction. And man, let me see if I can get this down in here and get some grease on it. All right, so two of them on the face of this. On the back side. We got plenty of oil on there. Let's put that together that's going to make the chain together like that now this gets a little tight when it's brand new and they make a special tool to press this together but we don't have that special tool that's okay all right so there's our o-rings out of the grease we're gonna put two more one there I'm sorry, X rings, get it right. There. And then, we're going to get our, I don't think there's a front and a back to this, but we'll make the letters show out just to be cool. I'll put this on here like this. Now, there's a million ways to do this because this is going to try to spring back out on you. I just use needle nose vice grips. Oh, there's a million ways to do it. Some people say, 
Well, Chris, that might bend the center of the chain. Well, we're not going to really put that much pressure on there. I've been doing it this way forever. You just kind of get some light tension to where you can see that groove. So you can get your clip on there. Don't have to be a million foot pounds. All right, now, here's the important part. When the bike chain is driving forward, you do not want this point, pointing this way. Because if you do and a stick comes in and hits this, it can knock it off. So you want this right here riding to where if something hits the drive edge of this link, it's just going to keep it knocked on there and not knocked off. So that's kind of the best way to do that. Now, usually, if you leave that on there long enough, it'll squeeze that down, and you'll be good to go. And I like to try to get that in a bend and use my Nipex pliers on it, if at all possible. Sometimes it's a little easier said than done. Very light pressure on the. You can actually use the thumb wheel to run them up if you like. Very light pressure. We'll put it in gear here where it'll stop turning on us. Right there. And let's see what happens here. There it is. Like I said, there's a million different tools to do the job. And a lot of people will tell you doing it like this damages the clip. But I've been doing it like that for 20 something years. Never had a problem. Probably should invest in the tool. <laughs> but anyway, again, guys, just don't forget. I can't stress enough. If you don't know, and most people do, but if you don't, you want this edge, not this edge. You want this edge pointing in the direction of normal rotation when you're driving forward. So if anything hits that leading edge of that clip, again, if it's turned this way, a stick could hit this right here and just knock it off into the woods. So, and that's really tough to find if that gets lost. All right, let's set the... Let's set the chain tension on the DR here. And that's all there is to it, guys. Nothing too bad. And um, you want about 30 millimeters of play in that. So we'll go ahead and put this kind of back where it was. And then set the other side and tighten it down. That's really about all there's going to be to it. Okay, and that is one before four. Let's get the other side and make sure we're square. sure we stay on three snug this up really good making sure it's free 
And then your final snug is just to line up your Carter key hole. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we ended up on three with the new chain, so that's pretty good. All right, we're just gonna put the Carter key back in. Here. Bend it real nice and neat, like we know what we're doing. Pretend like we do. All right, guys. That's all there is to it. Pretty happy with that. I think that's gonna work out. And as you can see, when the chain comes around, let's look for that master link. When it comes around, if something was to be in the way, here it comes, bam. It's aimed in the right direction. It's not gonna get knocked off and that's what we want. And I've checked the sliders and rollers are in pretty good shape on this bike still. How about the fancy Monster Energy <laughs> on the gas bottle? But anyway, guys, appreciate you guys uh, riding along with us today and on this uh, little journey of the new chain and, and uh, got a sprocket for the tank bag. And uh, appreciate everything, guys. Um, just a quick little video. I mean, I know most ADV riders know how to put their own chain on, but if you don't, here it is. Maybe you didn't know the trick about rolling it in. It, it makes it a little, go a little quicker. So leave us a like. And uh, if you got any questions, leave them down in the comments, guys. I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, I love to go read what you guys write. And I really appreciate you guys watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.